You probably have heard the new saying about sitting is the new smoking. And that is exactly the reason why early this year, to get more movement in this whole home office situation, home study situation for so many people throughout the last year, I started the new year with the desire to walk more, to have more movement, to have more exercise. However, it's oftentimes not really that simple to get more movement throughout the day, especially if you have a job that is mostly dedicated to a desk where you are sitting. Now for me, the first change a couple of years ago already was to get a standing desk, which I can electronically change from sitting to standing position. However, that really didn't feel that amazing after long periods of time and I found myself sitting more and more. Then, however, I found out about treadmill desks. First, I kind of shrugged it off and then it became more and more interesting. Now, with a treadmill in the use as a desk treadmill, I have been averaging about 12,000 steps every single day, which is incredible and I really can feel that. With an increasing interest in the topic, I actually also found other treadmills and with that, I also found manual treadmills like the Walk Illusion that I recently talked about on my channel. That system from Walkolution is very different from a traditional electronic treadmill. Based on the website, I just knew that that system is manual. You don't need any electronics for it. It is also long lasting, low maintenance, and it is a very different walking experience because you are actually the power and there is no electronic motor whatsoever. And now since I've been using both of them for a couple of weeks under my desk, I would like to give you a bit of an overview of their differences, similarities, and also my recommendation for different kinds of use cases. Now, before we jump in, I have to give you a quick disclaimer because number one, I am not a scientist. I am sharing my experience, how the walking feels, how I am experiencing this as a user. This is not a scientific claim or study. Additionally, the MTD700R Wanderlust treadmill desk has been sent to me by Walkolution for the purpose of making these videos. I'm not getting paid for these videos. My opinions here shared are purely my own. These videos are not sent to Walkolution before they're going live. However, what I do have are links to these products in the description below. Those are affiliate links and they help me make more videos possible like this by earning a small commission. With the Walkolution specifically, I actually also have a discount code which you can use to get a bit of a reduced price upon purchase of any of their walk illusion treadmills. And now with all of that out of the way, let's talk about the different categories, starting with the design of these two products. To be honest, in this category, it's not really a competition. The walk illusion definitely takes the cake, especially in the comparison between the two ones that I have right here. The walk illusion looks like a very well-designed piece of furniture that really levels up a room that it is standing on. Yes, it is massive. However, it is also made out of wood and all kinds of metal pieces that are really sturdy and look beautiful. On the other hand, the Fitty Fido treadmill that I have here is mostly made out of plastic and really gray tones that don't really level up any kind of room except for maybe a gym. It is functional, but it's definitely not the most pretty. And that's actually something that I find to be true for most other treadmills that I've seen thus far. Mostly they are plastic on the outside and in gray and black color schemes, not really adding anything to the room. The Walkolution on the other hand is a real statement toward design. Now from that, let's talk about the size. And in this area, I would say the electric treadmill wins, at least the one that I have right here. It is a really flat design that easily fits under any desk and doesn't really add much to your own body height. In my case, that's about 10 centimeters and that is really doable for almost any standing desk. The Fitty Fito treadmill is also really easy to store away when you don't need it because you can simply fold it down so that it's easy to store in between furniture or lean against a wall. The Walkolution, on the other hand, is between 30 centimeters and 35 centimeters in height. And that actually adds a whole bunch of complications with your standing desk, specifically if you're not using it with the inbuilt desk and you want to use the Walkolution with an already existing standing desk. The standing desk that I have been using for the last couple of years, for example, is not going high enough so that I can comfortably put the treadmill underneath and then also stand on top of it to easily work there. I actually had to get another little bit of an extension so that I can actually have my keyboard and mouse and all of those things a little higher even though the standing desk is already relatively high. But those 30 centimeters that the Walkolution gets me off the ground is just too much for this desk setup. 
Now this may not have any implications for you if you are using the inbuilt desk version from Walkolution or if you are purchasing your standing desk from Walkolution because I'm gonna assume that those are going to go high enough with that taken into consideration that you are 30 centimeters off the ground when you are standing on top of the treadmill. Now in terms of moving them around into different spaces, there both of them have wheels. The Walkolution has four wheels which it is standing on and thus is really easy to push around. And that is even if you have all of the things attached to it, including the desk or the backrest for example. But something to be aware of is that you're probably not going to want to move the Walkolution up and downstairs much. Because even without the backrest and table it is still around 70 kilograms. And with the backrest and with the table it's around 96 kilograms. So it's not really something you want to carry around a whole lot. But on flat surfaces and on one surface level you can easily push it around. On the other hand the Fitty Fitto treadmill is about 40 kilograms and that one you can also push around with two wheels in the front so you lift the back up and then you can push it around and of course also put it against a wall and it is about 40 kilograms so if you want to carry it you can do so with two people relatively easily and if you're just one person it is also possible to carry this around by using one of these strats as a handle. Now let's talk about something that is probably more important than design and size and that is actually the feeling or the experience of walking on those treadmills. And with that I actually have to say the Walkolution is a whole different story from traditional flat surface electric treadmills. And that is because you are one providing the power for the whole thing and secondly you have a curved surface and that of course provides a much rounder walking experience. On top of that this also gives you the ability to use this not only with training shoes but also with normal shoes and of course barefoot if you choose to do that. Now I wouldn't necessarily walk on the Walkolution for days barefoot. There is a more expensive version to the MTD700R which is going to have a different surface and that is better for barefoot walking but I find it really enjoyable every now and then. If you choose to go barefoot on this, something that I have noticed is that it actually kind of feels like you are walking on wooden planks of some sort, maybe a pathway to a beach or something like that, especially with a little space in between, you feel like you get a bit of a foot massage next to walking on this treadmill, but you have to be a bit more careful in the front of the device because there the planks are coming up and you have to be careful so that you don't squish your feet in between that area. On the flat surface electronic treadmill I would always use training shoes because those provide more dampening which the treadmill does not provide. It also has no curvature so you're always stepping onto this flat surface which is not really supporting a round movement. Then of course in terms of movement we also have the power that is necessary to actually start the belt moving and keep it moving. With the electronic treadmill there is a motor that is doing that job for you and you simply set the speed and you're done, you just do the walking. On the manual treadmill however it is a different story. You start the movement by simply putting one foot in front of the other and by putting your weight onto the front of the device it actually starts the belt moving and you then have to step into the next step. And with that you are the motor for the Wanderlust treadmill. That actually has two interesting aspects to it. One, the energy needed for that process and also the psychological energy needed for that process. Because I found with the electronic treadmill it is really easy to get to 20,000 steps in a day just by walking on that treadmill. On the manual treadmill however I am usually only going to do about 10 to 15,000 steps because there's more energy needed to keep on moving on that treadmill because my legs are providing the power and the move for the movement and there is no motor to do that job for me. That to me is a plus because it actually means my body is doing more of the work and I'm not getting supported by this electronic motor. You really have to consciously keep on moving forward and doing that movement and it's very easy to simply stop and just have a break or take a moment because you don't really have that part or that barrier of having to change the speed with your remote control for example. That to me was really noticeable because I noticed myself standing still way more often than on the electronic treadmill where I set the speed once and then simply forget it and just walk and walk and walk and walk. And then we have another category where the walk illusion definitely takes the cake and that is the noise and sound production while walking. 
Now the electronic treadmill has all kinds of sounds. You have the motor, you have a belt between the motor and the main belt, and then you also have shaving sounds as the belt moves across the flat surface. And all of those combined, including the walking of your own feet and all of that, is really adding up to a whole bunch of noise. Now the Walkolution of course is not completely silent either. Here you don't have a motor that is making any noises, you don't have transmission or any of those kind of things, you only have the belt that is moving and that is actually not just shaving across a flat surface, but there are a whole lot of ball bearings that are holding that and giving you that movement very, very smoothly, very silently. And I have a comparison of those two sounds while walking in different speeds right here. Now I just mentioned the ball bearings in the Walkolution, and that actually brings us over to the category of build quality. And here I would say it's a very unfair comparison because we are talking about a 400 euro fitty fitto treadmill and then a 4000 plus euro treadmill on the other hand. However, I still think it is an important distinction to make. The Walkolution is solid German craftsmanship. It is made out of huge pieces of wood and a lot of metal and ball bearings and just everything is really, really nice and detailed. On the other hand, the electric treadmill is mostly plastic on the outside. There is a bit of a metal framing underneath and inside, but of course the pieces are all kind of cheap, plasticky, and it doesn't feel as solid. And especially with the belt on the Fitti Fitto, I don't necessarily trust that in terms of its longevity, especially if you want to use this on a continuous basis every single day for multiple hours every day. But that's a topic for the maintenance category. And here you actually have a couple of things to keep in mind, especially with the electronic treadmill. I actually had to lubricate the belt multiple times and with the motor and transmission specifically, there I had to adjust because there were noises coming from the whole system and a bit of more tension was necessary between the motor and the transmission. That might be additionally necessary if you move this treadmill around a whole lot. Maybe that's not necessarily as bad if you just put it into one place, keep it there and don't move it a whole lot. But for me, having it under my desk and then sometimes it's also in another room to take a run and then I store it away because I need to sit sometimes still, those movements may add to that complexity. With the Walkolution, it's a whole different story. There is basically no maintenance. At least that's also what they say on their website and I can see why. There are the ball bearings for the belt. There is no shaving. You don't need to lubricate anything. There is no motor and there is also no transmission of any sort. So all of that adds to the fact that there is barely any maintenance. You simply push the treadmill into position, you lock the wheels and you start walking. Now talking about walking again, we have my last category that I want to compare and that's tracking features. With the Fitti Fitto, despite it being an entry model treadmill, you actually get a couple of details displayed on the inbuilt display. Of course you have the speed, you also have the distance that you have been moving and you also have a calorie count and the time that you have been moving on the treadmill. With other models, you might also have a phone integration and a tracking app that actually collects this data in your own session history so that you know what kind of walking you have been doing over the last few months. Now with the Walkolution, of course, there are no electronics to do that tracking for you, so you have to care about that yourself. For my own usage, I just put my phone into my pocket to do the step counting and that's enough for me. And now that we have covered all of these categories, I want to give you two different use cases and my recommendations around them. The first one being the work and walk with the under desk treadmill and then the second one is for exercise. Now with working and walking, of course, that is the reason why I even started to get into this topic and look at treadmills to begin with. For the electronic treadmill in this category, it actually has a couple of handy benefits. It is smaller and can be stored away more easily. It is also not as high and that way easier to match with an already existing standing desk. It keeps you moving with the electronic motor and you don't really have to think about the walking and also don't really have to think about the speed unless you want to change it with the remote control. And lastly, these types of electronic treadmills, especially like the Fitti Fitto, are relatively inexpensive and that way you can get started with those relatively easily and just simply get more movement in and start working whilst walking. 
But you also have to keep in mind there's additional costs. For example, the lubricant, there might be breaking parts with the motor and the belt. And then you also have the electricity that you need to power the motor of this electronic treadmill. But then of course we also have the walk illusion. And there you have a much more natural walking experience. You can walk on it in different kinds of shoes and even barefoot. You have a quieter walking experience and since there is no electric motor, you of course need more body power to power the device, which will probably also burn a couple more calories. And depending on which version you get, you have a built-in desk as a possibility and of course also the option to go with a freestanding desk. The downside might be that it is a pretty huge investment that you need to make to get this thing into your home. However, the company also provides a 30-day satisfaction guarantee which you can check out on their website. Now quickly let's also talk about the workout and exercise aspects of these treadmills. And there, with the electronic treadmill, it is actually rated to go up to 12 kilometers per hour and that's what the motor can withstand as well. Of course you have the cost of electricity that you have to keep in mind here and also the sound that this whole device makes. It is a relatively loud experience. We actually have a mat that is usually used for washing machines or dryers and that absorbs some of the sound but it's definitely a louder experience than with for example the treadmill from Walkolution. And with the Walkolution of course you don't need any electricity, you have a great walking experience and also a round running experience in my own testing despite this not being advertised by the makers on their website. They say that the MTD900 is actually made for exercising and better for that but I have actually tested the MTD700R and I find if you take away the desk at the top it is a really nice running experience for at least short periods of times. Overall, I would recommend the Walkolution MTD700R to anyone who can afford it. The walking experience is great. You can use it with shoes and without shoes for under desk work with the inbuilt desk if you choose one of those. And of course, you also have the benefits of little maintenance and no electricity costs. I think it's a great device for all of those things. But if you can't afford this type of investment, maybe a electronic treadmill is the perfect place to start. For us, for example, the Fitty Fitto is a step stone. It is a relatively inexpensive treadmill to test out whether or not you actually like to walk whilst you work. And of course also to try whether you like to go for a run in your room when the weather's bad outside. In those circumstances, I would say even getting started with some movement and getting started to try out whether or not you like this experience with something under your desk where you walk whilst you work, that is a great place to start with something like the Fitty Fitto. And with that, we have a wrap on this video and I hope it was helpful or interesting for you. If it was, I would appreciate a thumbs up. That always helps out a lot. If you have any questions around this topic or the Walkolution or the Fitty Fitto specifically, you can of course leave those in the comment section down below. That's always a great place to have a discussion and I'm gonna try to answer you there. Additionally, I also have links to these products so that you can learn more about them or purchase them if you want. And specifically with the Walkolution, as mentioned before, I have a coupon code which gives you a bit of a discount at the checkout. And now with all that said, I hope you have an amazing day, get more movement while you're working and I will see you in the next video. Ciao, ciao.